Welcome everyone to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes, and I guess you can't really call me a Warhammer beginner anymore. I mean, I'm not super advanced, but Bricky has been doing a fantastic job of teaching me all of the crazy, ridiculous Warhammer 40k things, and that's what this podcast is all about, learning the ridiculous stuff. So if you enjoy today's podcast, be sure to head on over to patreon.com slash adeptusridiculous, where you can get access to our Discord, uh, digital HD posters, bloopers, if they happen, which... Thank God they haven't happened too often. Uh, so yeah, if you enjoy today's podcast, be sure to head on over to Adeptus Ridiculous or Patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. Almost did a blooper. And yeah, support the podcast. I um, love how you say that it's like we don't have many bloopers, but that's kind of the only reason is because we force shy at threat of death <laughs> to put us rambling about anime into the episode of the All Garzan Party for like 20 minutes. It was a good anime. It was not a good anime discussion. We're sober, though. Now we can look back on it and laugh and be like, wow, that was dumb. Which, um, actually, speaking of, the next major goal we have for our Patreon is 7,000. And we said that at that point, we would continue to read the All Guardsmen Party. However, not horribly drunk. Maybe maybe a, maybe a nice drink here or there, but actually yes. read the goddamn thing. Yes. Because I didn't realize how popular that was. It's a very popular like oh, write-up. Really? It's very popular. Oh, okay. And because of that, I think, okay, we did a, li a little bit of a disservice by getting horribly drunk and me just being like, ah, fuck it, I'm going to go eat a cookie. So, <laughs> I didn't. I will be honest with you. I didn't even realize you were eating a cookie there. I knew you were eating something, but do you uh, even remember much of that? Um, I a little bit. I remember a little bit. A little um, bit is all that's needed. I uh, I know. I know. I drank a a fourth of a bottle of whiskey. Um, so that was fun. Um, my favorite comments on that video, though, were like, wow, you guys got drunk way too fast. You guys can't even handle your alcohol. And I was like, I'm going to take that as a compliment. I'm I'm not enough of a slovenly drunk to be like, yeah, fucking it took me three hours to get drunk. I'm a yeah, little weight. I had a I had a weeaboo cup full of seven shots. As far as I'm concerned, <laughs> I was completely in the right um, though I do want to make a quick announcement before we get too into it. Uh, as for, because I seem to be like, I always have a merch announcements. Um, mm. As for the merchandise, it is still good. I happen to buy enough. So we are not fully sold out. We did sell quite a bit, <laughs> uh, but we still have some. So if you like any of my shirts, I guess it's our shirts, our shirts, the shirts, uh, the shirts. And the hoodies, you can go check it out over in the description or at the Orchid 8 uh, on the content creator section for Devs Ridiculous. Also, the Doge Van Dyer merch that we spoke so much Ooh. about uh, <laughs> is, is now becoming a thing. We have decided to go for three separate Doge Van Dyer stickers because they're a little bit easier and because it's a lot easier to design. Uh, <laughs> but those are actually coming really soon. In fact, probably next week. So in the next week's Ooh. episode, we will be able to advertise them and show you all the stickers we've been working on. But, DK? Yeah. So this is part two. Part two. Of the three-part Fall of Cadia series, the mm -hmm. preludes. And last week, we discussed Chad Horace and the Luna Wolves, which ended up being way less than I expected. Yeah. I mean, because it was, it was, it's all about Horace. It's not so much the Luna Wolves, like they're yeah they're they're fine and everything, but it's about Horus and what Horus would go on to do and how uh, don't the Luna Wolves essentially sort of become the Black Legion because they follow Horus, they follow his exploits and then bleh. that is it's a fine way to put it, something like that. Yeah, uh, overall it does become the Black Legion, which we'll talk a lot more about today mm -hmm. because today we're talking about Abaddon. And I'm gonna call him Abaddon. So we like to call him Abaddon. I call yeah. him Abaddon. I just don't care. See, uh, in in my head, I was like, you know, when we talk about this, I'm probably going to be switching between Abaddon and Abaddon because I'll be like, oh, yeah, the Warhammer paint is always called Abaddon Black, but in my head, it's always been Abaddon. So I'm sure as we talk about it today, it's just going to be back and forth. So uh, if anybody's listening to this, that's why. That's why. Wait, we get I'm, it, I'm... but... 
Wait, what do you mean if anyone's listening to this? I'm hoping they're listening to this. Oh, I meant if anybody is concerned and listening to this. I've I've, I've left that part out. Whatever. It's oh, okay. fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. But um, I am anxious uh, to learn about Abaddon. I had to stop there and think, which way am I going to say it? Because um, I've only heard memes about him. I've only heard about how he's a giant loser, which always, always makes Shy mad whenever she hears someone say that Abaddon is just a big loser. Um, and I think I've also heard, I think it was from you, you told me that his mini uh, is notorious for, like, the arms fall off or something, because it's like <laughs> an, it's an old mini, and, like, that's one of the meme things that's in Trazen's gallery is uh, Abaddon's arms. Um but that's all I know about him. So I'm actually anxious to see if, like, the memes are accurate or if it's just literal shit memes for shit's sake. So it's a little bit of both. Um, now, Abby, as is an easier way to put it, I suppose, a good old Abby Abaddon, or by his first name, his name is Isakyle, or <laughs> or we just call him fucking Kyle if you feel like it. If you want to call him Kyle, we can call him Kyle. I thought I... his name was, it was Ezekiel at first. But that seemed too on the nose, so he's a Kyle or Kyle. I think if we call him Kyle, people will be significantly angrier. This is going to be my one meme moment. Uh, my one anime meme moment, because oh, no. his name sounds like Isekai. And it's, that's, that's, is, 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 is he getting reborn in like a new world? Is he getting... Is what it, does Isekai even mean? It's, uh, it's, it's, so it means, it's essentially, it's reborn in a new world, so like, uh, you know how in Sword Art he goes into the VR place and he's reborn as like a medieval knight and he's super strong? It's just, it's, it's whoa, like whoa, that. Whoa, 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 You know, what, like when they get hit makes, by a, what they makes get hit you by think? a truck and then they, they're, they're, oh my god, I've been reborn in a fantasy RPG. What the, okay, what the fuck? And also, what makes you think I've watched fucking Sword Art? It's 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 pretty it's pretty garbage anyway. So it's it's better than. Oh my god! Know. Okay, so his name is Kyle, uh, <laughs> and, and anyway, uh, so Abaddon Kyle. Uh, so so the memes <laughs> the memes are half correct, half wrong. Um, okay. So in the sense, Abaddon is actually pretty cool. Oh. Uh, he's got a pretty interesting backstory. He's an interesting character. I like his ideas. A uh, whole thing. He's pretty cool. The issue is that I think he was kind of the, well, one, his old model did have his arms fall off a lot, or there were, there were a lot of problems with that. Yes, that is true. Okay. But uh, more specifically, the big issue with Abaddon is that a lot of his crusades, a lot of his fighting, uh, ended up having him always lose, because for the longest time, GW was like, Chaos the bad guys, Imperium are the good guys, we gotta make them win every battle against the oh, bad guys. Oh, okay. So in a sense, it feels like he doesn't really get anything done, but that's right. not true either because he kind of does yeah but it's always in, in this that the other thing but anyway let, let me let me go ahead and go into it and then you can form your own opinion let's do it so uh good old kyle was a <laughs> luna wolves astarte of course mm -hmm. uh he was a firstborn son of a sithonian which if you remember sithonia was the planet they came from mm -hmm. um yep. of Mad a, max tech yep yep warriors. techno barbarian mm -hmm. uh he was the firstborn son of a gang warlord of that planet and he killed his father, actually, in 1v1 combat at a very young age after, like, a coming-of-age ritual went just very badly wrong. Oh. Uh, I, I don't know what the fuck coming-of-age ritual will end with with you shanking your dad, but a Mortarian is obviously very jealous. <laughs> oh, so jealous. He actually got to... Mortarian just sitting in a corner very depressed, like, Oh, I wanted to kill my dad. I want to kill my dad. It smells in here. <laughs> <laughs> What's that smell? <laughs> it's me. Oh. Um, so he was trained and rose in the Luna Wolves for a bit, and he became first captain, which is, of course, you know, pretty good, pretty good yeah. little thing there. Uh, however, what's interesting about Abaddon, at least from a more of a tabletop style is that he was actually one of the few of like the major characters i can think of that was actually had his own terminator armor crafted for him oh. um now terminators um, have we covered terminators um i i know they've been brought up a couple times i have seen terminator armor but i'm not sure we've gone into like super detail about terminator armor it's just bigger, better armor. It's yeah. it's really big, bulky, nigh indestructible armor. It's very Ooh. large. 
um, as opposed to the regular Astaris, but the Terminators, they move slow. They tend to, like, teleport instead, and they tend to carry, like, big hammers or, like, wrist-mounted mm -hmm. guns. They're just, they're just giant, tanky sons of bitches. Uh, but because of that, he was actually, in fact, so good at his job, he was basically the military standard for the whole first company. In fact, if oh, I'm not wow. mistaken, uh, Space Marine Legions and chapters or whatever, the first company is almost always comprised of Terminators. Mm. I think I think it's like the Terminator company. I think it's that way because I know in the tabletop there's an ability to give all your Terminators uh, an increase to hit called Fury of the First. And I'm assuming oh, it's the first company. Right. Um, but <laughs> Abaddon was like the right-hand man of Horus. Like he was right. the man, obviously. Mm-hmm. Nice. So do you have to be super special to like get Terminator armor? Like do you have to be like um proven in combat? Do you have to be like a, a super serious, super important person? Or is it just like, ah yeah, sure, you get Terminator armor and you get Terminator armor and look under your seats. It's Terminator armor for everyone. I, I think you're I think you definitely need to be like proving yourself to an extent to eventually become a Terminator. But Terminator armor is just like a variation. It's, like, it's, it's no different than, okay, are you going to be an infantryman in the army or are you going to be like a tank gunner? It's just like a different... Oh, okay. I think it's just like a different um, thing to do. Uh, I do think you need to be more skilled for Terminator armor, so I think they do pick people who are of a higher skill. But it's not like... It's not like the difference between that and being like a sergeant or a captain or, or okay. a lieutenant. It's nothing that yeah. high. Because I, I was thinking if it's, like, invincible armor, it's like, well, maybe we should give that to, like, the captains and the sergeants and the important guys because it's, like, you know, not yeah, invincible it, armor. Like, I mean, you can, like, take in-game, like, a captain in normal armor or a captain in Terminator armor if you want. Like, right. uh, it, it's definitely important, specifically the fact that they can't fucking make it because it's one of those things that oh. was lost to time and the ad mech don't create. Um, oh, it's one of those situations. Yeah, oh. so it's it's important, and you know, obviously they put well trained people in Terminator armor, but I don't, I don't think I know a whole lot about like the Terminator armor because it's not really something that's that's heavily like, oh my god, Terminator armor it involves this, 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 and this, and they only only get people who can do a triple cartwheel at a perfect <laughs> ten. Like, I don't know, man. It's it's big, chunky, tanky armor. <laughs> Um, imagine imagine being like yeah i can do triple triple cartwheels and they put you in the fucking terminator armor and you just can't move and it's like why yeah. why it's because doing a triple cartwheel is like moving your legs in general in terminator armor <laughs> anyway uh he was the greatest warrior of the luna wolves obviously in a chapter famed for its really good warriors yeah and he was just like devout to horus as horus was devout to the emperor it was like just another another layer of that 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 sheer um i don't want to say worship because worship bad but yeah. you know uh now horus had a specific group of advisors that he trusted like with utmost modesty and extreme extreme honesty and these advisors were known as the mornival and the mornival consisted of four people Garviel Loken, Tarek Torgadon, Horus Aximand, also known as Little Horus. Um, his name was actually Little Horus. Um, <laughs> yes, because he looked like he looked like a little version of Horus. Oh, he's so cute. Yeah, he looks like a little Horus. He's actually kind of cool, but he's he's a little Horus. And then of course Abaddon himself. Right. Um, this was his close Mordeval, and Horus would go to them constantly for help and advice as advisors. Like Horus, as smart as he was. He was not, like, too prideful to not have a group of people that he really trusted in their ideas. Um, he was also, Abaddon, was part of a really interesting secret warrior lodge, uh, which oh. a small amount of Astartes eventually become a part of. And the idea originally was founded by this guy. Oh, fuck. What's his name? Um, starts with an E, ends in sus. Uh... Is it uh, Erebus? Erasus, there it is. Oh no, please, the fucking Among Us memes, man. Oh, you I know thought how many of those popped up on Twitter? I was so happy, dude. They uh, made some guy gave me Erasus. They gave me the horse sus heresy. It was great. Uh, I'm so proud. Anyway, yes, of course, as you remember, Erebus <laughs> created the Warrior Lodges, which were like the secret. Uh, organization of Astaris that would meet together and eventually started leading to, you know, chaos problems and all that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, however, in the beginning, it was pretty, pretty not that. 
they they were kind of just doing their secret stuff, but it wasn't quite like horribly chaos based. Mm -hmm. Um, however, however, the one thing that was particularly interesting is that Abaddon, after Horus got shanky shanked by that fancy pantsy sword, <laughs> was the one who actually took Horus's body to the were bearers and Erebus to get himself healed, of course. Oh, okay. And like during the the whole transformation and everything, like Abaddon was so fiercely loyal to Horus that he's like, like, you know what? My dad's bad, uh, Abaddon. We gotta go get him. And Horus like, sir, yes, sir. Okay, I'm going. Let's go. <laughs> like uh, he was just so fiercely loyal. He didn't he didn't need any convincing. With with the way everything turns out, I would have I would have guessed that uh, Abaddon was like not that fiercely loyal and was kind of like one of those douchebag advisor types that was just waiting in the wings being like, ooh, he's gonna fuck up at some point, and when he does, ooh, this legion is mine, and, you know. I thought he was at first. You know, because everyone had their version of Erebus. You had Fabius Bile, you had Typhus, and, mm -hmm. uh, and of course Erebus himself, but I was thinking, was there any of them that was like the Black, or I guess the Sons of Horus at this point, um, version of Erebus and Abaddon not really I think that it's more the idea that there was always that first captain or underling that was important compared to the Primarch but even right. so I mean their Primarch's dead so whatever yeah the uh, Primarch is dead dead but Abaddon particularly was obviously fiercely loyal to Horus fiercely loyal and anything that Horus wanted to do he was like oh, sure ma'am he actually during the heresy led his Terminator company through most of the battles, in, uh, th including the drop site massacre. Like, he himself oh. battered the fuck out of some salamanders and iron hands. Oh, he was, that's, he a, was that's a pretty in big the, deal. He was in the front. He was, like, schmacking people. Yeah, he wasn't hiding behind, being a command. He was He was in there. He was He was getting blood on his hands. He was... Yeah, he, he was nutty. fucking Chad. Now, of course, heresy happened. We know the heresy. I don't need to go too mm -hmm. far into it. However, a reminder that the fight, the big fight between the Emperor Sanguinius and Horus was located on the Vengeful Spirit, which right. was Horus's flagship. Um, during this time, Abaddon specifically knew that there was fighting in the, in the bridge, and he was fighting his way to the command bridge from the Vengeful Spirit, just like slaughtering Imperial Fist squads and oh. all these people. He's just like making a beeline for the bridge as fast as he possibly could. Right. But naturally, so he, was, so he was trying to he was trying to get there and help Horus and make sure that like you know he killed the emperor or he didn't get you know that he he was he was <laughs> he was really going for it. Oh, he was he was moving. He was I was he was in the main command bridge and he was like shit and he was just like plowing through fucking uh, space marines trying to make his way to Horus. Damn. Of course he didn't make it in time. <laughs> yeah. And when he arrived, Horus was there, dead as fuck. Emperor was gone. Everyone was gone. Except for Sanguin, I don't know if they recovered Sanguinius's body. I don't remember. Not important. They, we'll talk about when we talk about them. Have. They probably right. did, but we'll talk yeah. about when we talk about Blood Angels. Mm -hmm. um, point being, he got there, and with Horus's like body in his arms, he detached Horus's giant taloned hand you always see in that picture, mm -hmm. and he swore that he would use Horus's uh, talon to strangle the Emperor with it. Oh, is uh, that why uh, Abaddon has that claw? That's, that that's is, actually Horus's. That is Horus's claw. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that, it's a pretty. It's, I think it's called the Talon of Horus. As well, it should be. Yes. As well, it should be. It is. It is a very, very cool looking, very, very cool looking uh, like weapon. And if I'm not mistaken, in the actual data sheet for for um, Abaddon himself. It's it's pretty fucking strong. Um, uh, I just looked at the data sheet. It's okay. Um, it's all right. It's all right. Yeah. It's uh, they, they need a they need a codex update. If, when they get, when he gets the codex update, it'll be very scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be okay to roll Black Legion when the when the codex update. Yes, it'll be much easier. Happens. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, point being, Talon of Horus. Yeah, he has it himself. Uh, but after that came, of course, the you know Horus happened, all that stuff. And then came the Great Scouring, which was the event in which all of the good, what the fuck word am I looking for? The loyalist, <laughs> loyalist legions uh, went out and just scoured the galaxy for traitors, right? Which is why right. all of them fled into the into the warp, into the Eye of Terror. Mm -hmm. 
because then the chaos gods were like, well, thanks guys, you appreciate it, and they all dipped, and then and then they all were like, oh shit, and they had to find a way to deal with the Imperials just hot on their tails. Oof. And so they, they of goofed. course they 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 goofed they goofed bad they, goofed. they did they did a galactic goof. <laughs> God damn it! You know you know what happens right after right after Horus made his way to the flagship, he saw Horus's body, and he was like fuck. And they looked to the corner, and then immediately there he saw Rogel Dorn and Jagatai Khan immediately venting. Oh. <laughs> Oh, of course. Of course, it all comes back to Among Us, sus venting. Uh, I am going to... I am looking forward to seeing what Shy does with this. Uh, it's just going to be that stuff. picture of that person upset, upsettingly looking at their phone. Like Walter White <laughs> staring at his phone. He's just like, what the fuck? What happened? Where have we... What have I become? It's just going to be an image of a 12-gauge. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so after so after they all vented into the warp, um, basically the main thing that happened. Nothing. No, nothing, absolutely nothing. Good. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, they returned to the going. Eye of Terror. Just keep going. And, and Abaddon, then now under the command of the Vengeful Spirit flagship himself, he fucking bailed. Yes, <laughs> as well he probably should. No, no, he left his legion. Oh, he, oh, I thought you meant he and the Legion just got out of Dodge. Like they were like, well, fuck, we got it. We got to uh, oh, go. oh, they did. They ran into the Eye of Terror and he took his ship and he left. Oh, he was was so tired. Between the death of his Primarch, who he deemed uh, was basically his father, yeah. through the insane losses, through the fe the sheer feeling of failure and the absolute sickness of war. He was just, like, exhausted. And the other nine Chaos Legions are were fighting each other. They were bickering and, and at each other's throats. Mm -hmm. and, and they were fighting each other over, like, scraps, you know, infighting. And he just thought he should let them. Like, why bother? It's true. You know, may maybe if I leave, my Legion will earn themselves a, a decent death. Oh. And, and I... and Because why be reduced to squabbles yeah. over this like like they were this close to toppling the empire and the imperium and killing the emperor and now and now look at them they're like they're punching each other like orcs yeah they've been reduced to squabbling like pigeons for scraps yes and he he was disgusted by them and he said fuck and he was like fuck them fuck this i'm done and he left and he took his ship with him and he went to a thousand worlds and he stood on every planet to learn each and every reach of the warp and its realm, to learn about the warp, learn about the immaterium. And the sons of Horus themselves, back on their planet, mm -hmm. they stagnated him. They, they, some wanted oh. them to refill their troops, to get more people. Some wanted to embrace the warp and use the warp as assistance to help them ascend and become more powerful. And then, and then Emperor's children were like, hey, give me that. <laughs> Yoink. Give me your horse. I'm taking your horse. Oh, poor Horace. Can't can't even get a good burial. Can't even get a good burial. Can't even have a good tomb. Emperor's nope. children are such fucking trolls. I kind of love the Emperor's children. The more I hear about them, the more I'm like, oh man, these guys are these guys are douchebags. But it's just the greatest kind. Like the name, the battle cry, just being massive. Tr I I I kind of I'm kind of digging the Emperor's children. You feel it? Mm-hmm. I'm glad. As so long as you feel it, that's all that matters. Yep. I'm really feeling it. I'm really feeling it, Mr. Krabs. So, after <laughs> that, after the stagnation and the infighting and Horus being stolen by the Emperor's children to have Fabius Bao try to make a clone, they were like, okay, this is bad. We need to, we need to find Abaddon. <laughs> so, we need our leader back. So, a couple people got together. Uh, one of the biggest ones is a guy named... Uh, is his name actually Phallus? Wow. Wait, no, wait, no way. I have I have it written down as Phallus. <laughs> the brother of Big Dickus. Oh, that's so that's unfortunate. Wait, no, no way. <laughs> no way. The disbelief. <laughs> Holy sh okay, okay. Uh the search the search for Abaddon. Um <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Falcus. Falcus. 
F-A-L-K-U-S. I had it written down as F-A-L-L-U-S. I think I missed, okay. I think I had a typo. <laughs> Falcus is a little better. He was probably Falk still bullied a lot, but it's better than Phallus. It's, That's definitely, yeah. It's way better than Phallus. Yeah, way, oh boy. Falcus Kibra, or Kibre. Uh, he was basically a, a chieftain of a war band. Uh, and also, he met with other former commanders. A Thousand Sun sorcerer named uh, hey. uh, Iskandar Kayon, and another guy named uh, uh, Leor Vine. Uh, what, what the fuck? Basically, <laughs> guy from World Eaters. Okay. Point so being, he, he, he met up with a Thousand Suns dude and a, and a World Eaters dude. The point being is that he, they met with people from various other legions. Okay. And they were trying to figure out how the hell to find. Uh, Abaddon, because not only do they need to find him, but they need to find him in the warp where time doesn't exist. Oh. <laughs> and so life is really hard trying to find him in the Immaterium. So as they were figuring things out, they actually got a buddy, a psyker uh, named Sargon from the Word Bearers. And Sargon was like, I have the unlimited knowledge and I know where Abaddon is. And Why is he Italian? <laughs> was that Italian? Kind of sounded Italian. Like, hey, you know. I know what Abaddon is. Hey, give me a pizza party. <laughs> hey. hey what? He's not the Fonz, man. Hey, I know what Abaddon is. It's, it's cool, man. Hey. What? I'm, I'm doing the thumb thing because if you ever do a Fonz, you, you got to do the thumbs, right? Hey. Abaddon. Um, all right. Hey. So, so. <laughs> So I told you before the podcast, but obviously I've been, I've been, because I finished the, oh, the book club. Uh, oh, yeah, the book club, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're doing book club, read, read the book, Infinite Divine, super great, I finished it, great book, we're talking about it in June. Um, yeah. But, we'll mention that earlier in the next episode, um, but I, <laughs> I'm reading the Night Lords one now, uh, Soul, Soul Drinker, I think is what it's called, or Soul Hunter, mm -hmm. and I think it's Soul Hunter, and because I told you earlier, they all talk in like, the, the narrator has them doing, like, these thick, like, Eastern European, Russian, whatever, Slavic yeah. accents. Cause, like vamp yeah, because Dracula vampires. Because vampire yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know the difference between a Romanian accent and a Russian accent, but whatever, it's that thing. Now, you got me thinking that all word bearers sound fucking Italian. <laughs> Henceforth, all word bearers fucking, are just the Fonz. Fucking Logar <laughs> is like, hey, Big E, I made a church for you. You know, they're going to kill people if they don't believe in you. Hey! Hey, why you burning down in my church, hey? <laughs> hey, no, Macarius? Yeah. Hey, Manakia, no, no, Gilliman, why are you making me stand here? You fucking bitch, I kill you. <laughs> oof, oof, man. Anyway. <laughs> this took a weird turn. <laughs> what, 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 Gilliman was standing there when they when he had all the dudes kneel before the Emperor, remember? Yeah, but somehow us doing the fawns for the word bearers as they're getting everything they love burnt to the ground. It's a weird turn from, I, I, <laughs> from Abaddon. I, I'm imagining Lorgar uh, on his knees with like his hands out like Platoon, uh, but instead of in front of Monarchia, it's just, a, it's just a, like a little Caesar's on fire. Oh. It's like, no! <laughs> Actually, that's not fair. Any Italian would hate Little Caesars, but <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, any any connoisseur of pizza or, or anything that's remotely pizza related should hate Little Caesars. I mean. So so long as as they can afford really good pizza, because if if I'm ever on a money crunch, Little Caesars the place. Fair, I'll give you that. All right, perfect. So now we know that that Lorgar is the Fonz, and the world uh, the world bearers are are Italian. Uh, continue <laughs> continuing from there. Um, <laughs> shit, where were we? Right, they're finding Horus. No, yes. they're finding Abaddon. Uh, Horus is gone. <laughs> yeah, Horus uh, okay. is gone, you can't find him. <laughs> so, so, basically, uh, they eventually use this word bearer psyker, uh, psychic ability, uh, and all of his, like, A's to go ahead and find out where Abaddon was located. However, the Thousand Sun Sorcerer kind of peered into his mind, because psychers do that, and was like, I can't read anything else about his mind. There's like protective wards in there, like in like in his brain. What the fuck? Oh. And then immediately after that, all the emperor's children fleet came like arrived and was like, "Hey, oh wait, no, that's that's um, <laughs> sorry, uh, <laughs> that's word bears." <laughs> hey, but <then. laughs> and, and it's like they came in and they and they were like, "Oh, hey, what's up? Uh, we're gonna kill you now, cause fuck oh, you." No. <laughs> uh, so they only escaped uh, barely by the Chaos Sorcerer, like, creating, like, a teleportation thing and just bailing. 
Mm -hmm. um, but they made their way out, and they had this long little journey going through all these places called the Radiant Worlds. They they cut through an Eldar webway through the warp and made their way through. And the Radiant Worlds were a bunch of worlds that are kind of like on the edge of the Eye of Terror that spills into the um, real world mm -hmm. uh, near Cadia, and which we'll definitely talk about soon. But yeah. With time, they kept on searching, and this is, I'm saving a lot of, like, exposition here, yeah, but yeah, long sure. story short, after enough time of searching, they found the Vengeful Spirits, and they found Abaddon. Uh, they found good old Kyle. <laughs> Kyle. Kyle. Issa Kyle. <laughs> you know, okay, I can't, I can't, I'm making a bunch of Among Us memes, I guess I can't really be upset if you make a stupid nope. ass I get oh, thing, a stupid ass fucking good anime. Good Issa Kyle, yep. Uh, but... Abaddon explained that he was actually the one who sent that word bearer to them. And oh. he was the person who programmed the, the mind blocks and such. Because he, after doing a lot of thinking, a lot, of, a lot of time, he thought to himself, Okay, we are no longer the name of our former legions. We are no longer the sons of our former fathers. Mm -hmm. You take you take a look at all of us, and the three of you that came to me, a word bearer is Psyker. A member of the, I think it was the Black Legion. I forget what the the, the Phallus guy was, but um, a, a sorcerer of the Thousand Suns and a captain of the World Eaters, men from different legions working together for a common cause. Uh, we are no longer our bloodlines. We and as they all tend to go and squabble, our job is to now forge our own destiny and create our own group. Ooh, that's cool, actually. I like that. So that was his like, concept. It's like, at the moment, you know, with the legions near extinction, all these problems happening, he thought that he sought warriors that wanted to be more than the legacies of diminished legions. And uh, the it's like this group. It's it's a brotherhood for the brotherless. Ooh, that was the idea. That's, that's, that's a cool concept. I like that very much. And so oh. all nine traitor legions would be accepted under one new banner. And can you guess Ooh. what that banner was? Is it is that like the black the black legion? It's that, the black that, legion. That, yeah, okay, cool. So they were all accepted under the single the single homogenous banner of the black legion. Um and then after they kind of started creating this, I don't know, pact or, or whatever, or started coming together, Abaddon also knew that Horus could never walk again, could never live again, even if the Emperor's children were able to resurrect the bastard. Mm -hmm. Because not only because of whatever fuckery they were going to get off into, um, but also the demons themselves of the warp said Horus's name in mockery because he he died oh. of shame and failure. Yep. And, well, so and he, just like the the concept of what they're trying to do is like, you know, you don't want Horus to come back because like that's all gone. Like you don't want to be... Uh, they they want to make their own new thing. They want to make their own new legacy. They don't want the old guard coming back and like, oh yeah, I'm back. You, you know, I'm gonna be ruler again, even though you guys have pledged yourself to not care about you know, yeah, the previous leaders or whatever. Yeah, old Primarchs. Like, you, yeah. no, why would you want Horse to come back? Bring a shackle back to free hands. Yeah. So I, I now I kind of get why Abaddon was like, hey yo, let's go make sure that Horus clone is fucking dead dead. Yes, and so that's what they did, is they went with their newly founded legion to fight the Emperor's children on their homeworld of Harmony. Uh, ironic that the Emperor's legion's homeworld is called Harmony. I know. Is that, uh, another, is that another sick joke? Because it's just like, there's no it, Harmony there at all? I actually don't know. It is in the warp, so that definitely has an, a concept that it might not be <laughs> that great. Um, but I, I actually we haven't covered the Emperor's children yet, so I'd have to figure out. But the Emperor's children are a bunch of really sick fucks. Uh, oh. who, li who like a quick fuck? Hey. Um, hey. I actually hey. don't know that song, but my buddy Demeki won't stop singing it. So, and, and, and in reality, it works. <laughs> because because the Empress children are, in fact, <laughs> sick fucks that like a quick fuck. They're they, smash that, based. Yeah. yeah. Good, so good, good for them. It's Bright perfect. pink armor, love a quick fuck. All right, let's go. It's, it's perfect. So, there was a large fight uh, over in the Empress children area. Uh, it was called the... Uh, what was the name of the big city? It was like, uh, oh shit, what was the name of the big city? It's like a really, really big named city that they fought in. You're asking the wrong guy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm asking myself. Canticle City. There it is. Canticle City. 
Um, anyway, I'm skimming through this stuff a lot because this is like an hour and a half long episode of all these specific battles. But mm -hmm. the long and short of it is they fight through the Emperor's Children's stuff. They fight through the Emperor's Children's city. They arrive at the, I don't know, Gene Factory or whatever Fabius's Biles fuckery got up to. Yeah. And the, right there in it, Rose motherfucking Horus Whew. rebuilt... But he, they they couldn't have built him like back perfectly. Like he's got to be like a a significantly weaker altered version of Horus, right? I I think maybe a little because in the oh. events that followed afterwards, he's still particularly strong, but he's obviously not the same soul. Uh, but he like he emerged there with a gigantic maul, which was a gift that was made from the Emperor to Horus because they stole the damn thing. When he became the war master. Mm -hmm. And the first thing he did was beat the absolute shit out of all of the guys in the room. Oh. Like, even on the wiki, it says this was not a child cloned from scraps of tissue and drops of blood, nor an abomination half lost to mutation's touch. It was Horus Lupercal, cloned from dead flesh harvested directly from his stasis preserved corpse, clad in the breathtaking black war plate stripped from his dead body. Uh, were played with a long fall of his white wolf fur cloak and the pale shimmer of kinetic force protecting him like a halo. Like, Horus wow. Rabor. Like, pretty goddamn close to the man. Damn. Um, yeah, I, I just figure whenever there's a cloning situation, like, oh, yeah, it's going to be like a mindless, brainless version, and it's not going to be anywhere near as strong, and it's going to be like a pseudo-zombie. No, he was, he was full-on crazy-ass Horus. Except very angry. In fact, he was going he was going mad. He started beating the shit out of that one uh, uh, <laughs> Thousand Sun Sorcerer uh, with his maul. Almost killed him, but didn't. He's alive. Four um, Thousand Suns. They just can't catch a break. They really can't. Uh, but Abaddon stood behind Horus, and he just said one word. Good old Abaddon was like, enough. And all, that, and that, all he did, Horus swung around, and then Abaddon took with the town of Horus caught the fucking mace in air Ooh. and and gripped it and then and then uh with uh with Horus looking at it he was he spoke to Abaddon for the first time and he said specifically like that is my talon right there oh did he and Abaddon sm closed his giant fist and smashed the maul into pieces Ooh. and then and then after uh, they fought a decent amount or whatever, uh, Horus eventually, like, recognition caught him. And then he said, he was like, Ezekiel. It's like, my son. It's like, that's my son. And as he said that, Abaddon took the claws and he shoved it right through Horus's chest. Oh. And, and, and a giant, like, like, fucking, a giant, like, fucking computer-sized hole. Wow. And then he bear, and then he uh, shot the storm bolter in the actual talon itself, burying six shots into his exposed neck and chest, and blasted him apart from the inside. And then, Ooh. as he pulled his talon out, he just said, "I am not your son." Damn! Shit. So, I'm curious if uh, if that recognition wasn't there and didn't give a bad in that momentary that that moment of like a uh, 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 weakness or i guess it gave horus that moment of weakness like was abaddon actually stronger than horus would 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 abaddon have won regardless uh i'm not quite sure obviously this wasn't the horus yeah he's obviously cloned and he's not of his right mind really he's in like a rage so but i yeah. mean obviously abaddon still <laughs> very competent in a fight no he, he is without a doubt extremely competent i'm assuming that i mean he still had lots of other people there uh, mm. but he is still horrendously formidable as a as a person i'm not sure he's horse level but regardless maybe that single bit of uh hesitation allowed him to strike Get the killing blow. blow yeah not quite sure uh, not honestly it's not really the point the main yeah, it doesn't point, matter really it's yeah it's the main point scenario. is like yeah. 
It's like Horus is now dead, dead. Yeah, he is very dead. <laughs> no coming back from that one. No, and also it was all a big thing of defiance for Abaddon, where he's like Horus, like you. I do not deem you as a father anymore. Like I am, I am above you. I am, yeah. I am better than you. And and quote unquote, Horus was weak. Horus was a fool. He had the whole galaxy within his grasp, and he let it slip away. The quote from Abaddon the Despoiler. So, from there, Abaddon, newly pronounced War Master, new leader of the Black Legion, a, a group that welcomes all who wish to join its ranks, and welcomes all other uh, groups to join its ranks. And Man. he then, from there, began doing what Chaos does best, which is be a real pain in the ass <laughs> to uh, the Imperium. It's crazy. So far, uh, Abaddon sounds really dope, and he sounds really cool, and, like, it sounds like he is an absolute motherfucker. Like, he he will mess you up. It doesn't matter if you're Horus or whatever, um, which is why it's so very surprising, uh, looking back, that the memes are all about, he's a fucking loser, he's an armless loser, this mother, he's a fucking idiot, and it's like, wait, what? This is, I, this is the, th that's this guy? <laughs> I think the issue were the Crusades, because uh, I don't, I can't really talk enough about the actual other 12 Black Crusades, mm -hmm. but I mean, well, obviously the 13th Black Crusade is the fall of Cadia. Right. And that's the big one. That's the big, like, whoa. whoa. <laughs> uh, but I think the issue is that in so many, like, novels and, and fights and lore, Abaddon always loses because you it's like the big bad guy. Yeah, it's like it's like win. a super. Yeah, it's like a superhero villain. Like, he has to constantly lose. And unless you've got another way to make him cool, like, I don't know, the Joker. Joker is, mm -hmm. like, loses because Batman has to win, whatever, but he's still a pretty cool fucking character. Yeah. So, even so, there's still all that kind of stuff you have to, like, figure out. Gotcha. Um, and, and yeah, Shy makes a good point. They call it the Long War for a reason. You don't topple the Imperium in a day, which is very, <laughs> very true. Yeah. Um, but it's Abaddon, like I said, in a sense, like, yeah, he's lost a lot, but... In a weird way, you could almost kind of uh, take that uh, just like suspension of disbelief that it's more like Games Workshop's fault, which obviously doesn't make any sense because yeah. they write his damn stories. But regardless, Abaddon is pretty fucking cool. I think a lot of people might think that he's a little bit like generic um, oh. because he's just big classic chaos guy. Mm -hmm. uh, where it's similar to Marnius Calgar or Gilliman of the Ultramarines, he's like that the the basic version of the chaos. But honestly, he's pretty cool. I, I mean, I think that people like Typhus are cooler. Mm -hmm. But even so, you know, he's yeah, still. I, neat. I guess I could see like people thinking he was also like just a generic villain, you know? Because like I mean, Megatron, super cool. Everybody loves Megatron, but literally all he does is lose. That's it. Like, yeah. he's super strong, and he's super great, super awesome commander, but, like, all he does is lose to Optimus over and over and over again. Yeah, that make, it makes plenty of sense with that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, now, for the actual Black Crusades themselves, we're probably not going to talk a heavy amount on them, because, they, I mean, they all have their own their own specific thing, but they, they date back. They <laughs> date back. back. <laughs> like, the first Black Crusade was in M31. Oh, Oh, yes. Yeah, so, so that's like a couple hundred years after the heresy. Yeah. Like they go, uh, they go back a bit, and that one was the first battle of Cadia, uh, which he obviously them uh, like failed, mm -hmm. which is you know that mm, that's yep. that sucks. He lost. Okay, he, lo yeah. he lost that one, but he did claim a really cool demon sword called the Drachnen. Gazunite? <laughs> like what? <laughs> I don't know. It's in his model. He has a sword and the talon. It's the sword. Oh, his minis were very cool looking. Shy just posted the picture of it. That is so lick. That it thing's arms dope. are always falling off. Apparently, uh, other other mini, old mini. Oh, oh. I guess Shy showed like a new one. Uh correct. Um, oh, boy, that's a sick mini, dude. 
It is really, really cool. And and the sword he's wearing called the is the name of a it's a powerful demon that's been known as many names in the history of mankind. Echo of the first murder, end of Emor Emories? Emorais, whatever. Echo of the first murder? Yep. Although nice. its existence is closely linked to the shedding of blood, it has no ties to the blood god, being powerful enough to be an independent chaos entity, which is pretty rare. Whoa. Uh, it says it can rend reality apart where the weapon strikes, rip through armor, flesh, and bone without resistance. The demonic spirit animating this fell weapon can alter the blade's appearance, revealing the skulls and faces of the souls it has devoured. Whoa. So if you look at the actual blade, you can see it has like little like cartoon faces on it, kind of. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. It, Jeez. It, it's got like legitimate, legitimate faces like howling in the blade itself. Here's, the, here's a better picture of it. Oh, that is a that that's a sword. That's Holy a fucking sword. That's, that is a chaos sword. How do you lose when you have something like that? Other than just GW being like you're the villain, you lose. Well, you know, numbers or someone hits him with a train. I don't know. I don't even think a train. Like he could just no. Like, okay, he could okay. Slice the train in half. Okay, they exterminated him or something. I don't fucking okay, know. Cool. I mean, I mean, there's always some some yeah. way to lose. Also, is that an ultramarine that he's crushing under his feet? It is. Nice. Do you like do you like Avedon more now? <laughs> oh, I I like him a lot more now. <laughs> what poor, a guy! What those a poor guy. Ultramarine fans. <laughs> um, now the second Black Crusade is is kind of neat, uh, only because the name is funny. It's called the Cursing of Corona, <laughs> which I find fucking hilarious. <laughs> so ironic. <laughs> it, it's a uh, it, it's a it's a dead world located near the Eye of Terror. Basically, oh, no. oh, um, I don't like the sound of that. That's, uh... Well, regardless, that I, I, there's a lot of these. Uh, he invokes a curse that sinks to the core of the world. Um, the third Black Crusade was the host of Tol Toloman. Desecration okay. of Gerstal. <laughs> he he just right. he destroys the remains of Saint Gerstal, which was okay. an which was an imperial saint that died defending the uh, Cadian Gate uh, after oh. the the first centuries of the Horus Heresy. Um, and he destroyed their remains, which was obviously like a big, like, like, uh, faithful blow, you know? Right. Um, then the fourth Black Crusade was the devastation of El Fenor, the death of Cromark, which was the Grand Citadel of Cromark. So it sounds like some of these crusades he's actually succeeding. Yeah. Oh, okay. But it, it's, it's a lot, it's like... The concept, the context, the context is the fact that he's destroying a bunch of shit, but it might not always be the thing he wanted to get done. Oh, okay. Um, now, granted, uh, as Shai put, she said, um, it was a prophecy that Saint uh, was going to stop Abby. So Abby said, fuck that and erased his ass from existence. <laughs> so uh, that, uh, let's not good forget call. that ca good chaos, chaos is a bit petty at times. Uh, no at the be kidding. at the best of times, chaos can be a bit petty, but then again, so is the Imperium. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there was uh the the fifth one was the Tide of Blood, which was the scouring of Alicia, which allows him to summon a demon prince and destroy a bunch of chapters, Ooh. a bunch of like successor chapters of Space Marines, which was nuts. Um, yep. The sixth one was Drekhart's Folly, which had him bring the uh, Sons of an Eye, which was a war band of uh, of Horus. He had them. He had them like uh. Like taken up, merge them into the Black Legion. Okay. Um, the Ghost War was number seven, uh, which claim he claimed the gene seed of the Blood Angels slot that were slaughtered at a, at a Macan. Eighth was the Skull Gather. Uh, he appeased the Changer of Ways, which was Zeech, with sequences oh. of death creating a mathematical equation of terrible and profane per uh, perfection. I, yeah, it's, these are all these are all the shortened versions. These are fucking weird. Um, he just made Zinch happy. <laughs> okay. well, I mean, it's a, it's a good thing to do. You don't want him coming after you. No. Uh, the ninth one was the starving of Cancephalus. Uh, chaos fleets leave the Eye of Terror undetected during a massacre. The tenth one was the conflict of Helicia or Hel Helica, which is Abaddon the Iron Warriors fight the Iron Hands on their home planet. I think they try to take their home planet of Medusa, the Iron Hands one, and I think they fail. Because okay. um, I'm pretty sure the Iron Hands still have it. Uh, but yeah, yeah, he, they did fail in that one. It still stood, uh, but he learned much about the defenses of the Iron Hands, which he'll put into good use later on. Okay. Uh, and then the 11th was the Doom of Reloria, 
where he ab abducts thousands of orcs to conduct experiments on their use in the warp. <laughs> um, which is hilarious. Well, I'm curious, did, was that how he got, um... Is that the one where he got that one dude in the in Korn's realm? Oh, is the, the the one that's just always stuck there and is just yeah. I don't, I don't think it's over and over again because it's I, I don't think it's that one. I don't think it's that one. Okay. Damn it! No, he was fought. He dealt with an orc wa under the name of Murgor Undred Teeth. <laughs> very orc. Very, I love orc very names. Orc. They're very God. easy. <laughs> and then the the big twelfth crusade was the Gothic War. And that one's a lot more recent and a lot more important. Okay. Um, this is a much larger war, a much uh, a much bigger one. Uh, they fought uh, the Imperium of Man, of course, but also some Eldar. Um, they had a bunch of major naval battles, but the big one, the big one, big one, the big one was his ability to gain something known as a Blackstone Fortress. Oh, what what's a what? <laughs> do go on. So there are many Blackstone Fortresses, and Blackstone Fortresses are not necessarily known where they've come from. Uh, some deem that they might be the uh, old ones who made them. Uh -huh. um, it's not Necron-based, but there, it's something. And these are just massive starships, enormous starships. The only people that have starships larger are the Imperial Fists, because they're Ooh. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Because they're dumb enough to build something that big and unnecessary. Okay. Because they'd rather pilot meteors. Um, <laughs> but Wait, so where does where do these Blackstone fortresses come? Like, how, where did he find it? And like, they're just there. They just exist, and he just found, happened to stumble on one. So they're they're like out and about in the galaxy. Mm -hmm. there, there's no real like if ands or buts. Sometimes they were used by the the ones that the Imperium found were used as bases, naval bases. Um, but oh. some of them were either destroyed by chaos. But the main thing is the fact that the giant gun in the center of this rotating pylon mm -hmm. is enough to to like clean a fucking planet. Oh, is it's that a, like an exterminatus type of deal? It's like worse. It, it's basically a Death Star <laughs> weapon. Like instead of exterminatus, which will crack the planet's core or like virus bomb it, this will like turn like like they did with um the Death Star in Star Wars. Like it'll turn into fucking atoms. Okay, gotcha. it's just gone. Jeez, and 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 so uh, Abaddon has one of these now. He does. <laughs> Oh boy, um, that's no good. No, uh, that's no good I, if, for the I'm not, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, uh, he was able to capture and activate six of them. Uh, he's, <laughs> he succeed. He was able to succeed in taking three. Uh -huh. Um, but he uh, was defeated by the combined might of both the Imperium and the Eldar working together. Uh, wow, that's and a pretty big deal. Like he, he, he <laughs> it took the Imperium and the Eldar to stop him. I mean, Blackstone Fortresses, man. Yeah, that's true. But God, that's that's such a big deal. Oh yeah, they had to work together, God. which is scary. Um, yeah. It won't be the first time they've worked together, though, and it won't be the last. But mm. uh, after enough time of their their fighting and stuff, uh, after the Imperium tried to recapture them, uh, two or one of the fortresses it self destructed later. Um, okay. And then they were eventually able to capture a couple more, but Abaddon retreated with two. He was able to take two of them and take them back to the Eye of Terror. That's still pretty good. Yes. That's, that's still pretty nice. Pretty nice to have two of those fucking uh, behemoths at, at your beck and call. That's not bad. Not bad. No, not bad at all. Um, one of the fortresses uh, was actually, I believe, gifted to a man named Huron Blackheart, uh, which is quite the name. Yeah. Um, I don't really remember where it went, but I think it was an assistance to help free Gilliman later on. Uh, but I know where the other one named Will of Eternity went, but we need to discuss that in the Fall of Katie episode because <sighs> that Blackstone Fortress does have a big role in the Fall of Cadia. Uh, you're going you're gonna to blue ball us like that? I a little see. bit. Because th see. that's the big pre prelude is that <laughs> Cadia is the 13th Black Crusade, the most recent one, and the biggest part of the lore, uh, or like one of the major uh, biggest like things of the lore that's happened recently. And okay. it is quite, 
quite an endeavor. Okay, I guess. You I guess, guess. I guess we can wait till next time to talk about that. I guess. If you're going to be all like that about it, I guess. I'm going to be all like that about it. <laughs> <laughs> Gee whiz, John, I don't want to hear about the Fall of Cadia now. Yeah, I know you do, but the Fall of Cadia has to wait because the Fall of Cadia is important. Fine. Good. <laughs> Damn. Jeez, Abaddon, how come the Chaos Gods let you have two Blackstone Fortresses? <laughs> so, um, one last thing. Uh, so the, the Black Legion accepts anybody from any Chaos faction, right? I mean, anybody, I mean, you know, don't be too rough, but, mm, yeah. but yeah, yeah, they basically are like, all come, all welcome, you, if you... Like, you do not serve the War Master, you serve by his side. Right. It's the idea of, like, you're not going to be an underling, you are a fellow soldier. Right. Do you ever think Chaos is going to work together again like they did in, like, the Horus Heresy, where they were actually all on the same page? Because it sounds kind of like the Black Legion maybe one day could sort of become that, where, like, you got Thousand Sons, you got Word Bearers, um, uh, and, and, yes, ish. Now, if you mean the chaos gods, no. <laughs> oh yeah, chaos gods probably not. No, but like all the different, like I guess traitor legions. I guess is yes. the better way to put it. Yes, they will, and they did, and they did in this thing called the fall of Cadia. Oh man, it's all the next episode. God, <laughs> it looks like it is. Yes, it, it will. It will be a thing soon. They they kind of did work together in the next one. Um, I think Typhus is part of it, actually. Ooh, stinky boy. There, there's a lot. You've got, like, Lord Castellan Creed. You've got Saint Celestine. You've oh, got okay. Belisarius Call, uh, Typhus, Trazen the Infinite. What? Oh. Trazen hey. is a part of the Fall of Cadia. He plays a big fucking role, actually. Our, our book club boy. Let's go. Uh-huh. Yvrain of the Eldar. G Gilliman. It, it, it's literally Avengers Endgame, and it's just as good in the sense of oh, it's not okay. great, but it's got it's good enough. It's got problems, okay. but it's good. Yeah, because in my head, I was just like, man, why doesn't Chaos work together more? Like, they almost had the Imperium. Why don't they work together again? Why don't they, like, bolster their forces and do it again? If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Because the Chaos Gods are jealous pricks. <laughs> as As we are learning. Yes, and while a lot of the Chaos Gods do, in, uh, a lot of the Space Marine Legions don't accept the help of the Chaos Gods, because there's five, and mm -hmm. out of the five, I think only four of them have sworn allegiance. Because uh, Emperor's Children, Death Guard, Thousand Sons, and World Eaters sworn to a god. But Black Legion, Night Lords, Word Bearers, I'm missing a couple. Hmm. Which ones am I missing, Shy? I know I'm missing two. Word bearers. Oh, oh, iron warriors. I'm not sure why. I always thought the word bearers became the world eaters. I guess because they both have like world eater, world bearer. No, no, they're word, 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 word bearer. bearer. Right, right, right. I don't know why, but I thought the word bearers became the world eaters. But I guess the world eaters are like the, they're, they're corn, right? Yeah. Uh, right. I'm so upset I'm forgetting the last one. And the word bearers are Lorgar. No. Uh, yes. Word yes, bearers okay. are Lorgar. World eaters are Engron. Gotcha. Fuck. I'm so Engron. F fucking hell. Wait, wait. Black Legion, Night Lords, Iron Warriors, Word bearers. Who am I missing? The some guy is sons. so. Some guy is thousand. No, no, no. That's that, Zinch. That's Zinch. Whatever. I just. I no, no. no I'm, I'm talking about the 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 non the non specific. Oh. Gotcha. I just wanted to get the some thousand sons in there. Man. Guy is so angry right now that his legion is not being represented. Okay, factions, Chaos Space Marines, Legion. Um We can't there's... end until he gets this, guys. He has to Alpha find Legion! Him. Alpha Legion, you fucking <laughs> dingus, Bricky! They're so secretive, you forgot about the Alpha Legion! They're too secretive! They're, they're too, too smart! They're too secretive! Jesus! They're hyd they're, they're the Hydras, right? The hi they're Hydras, yeah. They're, they're the, the Hydras. Cool Hydras. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah, yeah. No! They have, they have such sick minis, too. God. Damn it, of course- that's fucking funny. That the Alpha Legion were the ones that- that- that might not even be Chaos! We don't fucking know anymore. Really? 
They might not even be Chaos? There's a, a, a long running idea that the Alpha Legion aren't actually Chaos, but they're just, a, they're pretending to be Chaos as a giant ruse to deal with, to actually be loyal to the Imperium. Oh, I, ooh, oh man, I'd love an Alpha Legion episode, as I'm sure. No, I'm not ready. <laughs> Well, no, not yet, obviously, because we still have the fall of Cadia, and I'm sure there are a bunch of topics after that we want to cover first. Like, it's don't worry. I'm we'll, too scared for the Alpha Legion. Eventually, as as we move on, we'll we'll get you comfortable with it. All right, as as I get more knowledgeable and you get more, we'll event we'll get there. One day, fear. One day. But you wanna you wanna take us home, or do we have do we have anything more to uh, announce, discuss? Anything like that? I don't think so. Uh, we made our Patreon discussions. We mentioned book club, new merch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stickers. It, stickers coming out soon. Mm -hmm. um, if you want some uh, Dips Ridiculous merch, obviously, we mentioned earlier, check out the description. Uh, of course, you know, at the moment, we're doing all right on uh, on amounts. I wanted to actually do a maroon long sleeve that's Omnisaya based. Ooh. As like as like a long sleeve dark like red color because that works good with the um, with text yeah. and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I might do that at some point, but that might take some time. So yeah, that that's like tech priest robe color, right? That yeah, maroon, that was the red. Ooh, yeah, I thought it'd be like pretty it. cool. Uh, we'll see, but we'll we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, anyway, my name's been Bricky. Thanks so much for watching the podcast episode. Next week we got the Fall of Cadia for you. Get it hype, get excited. Whoop, whoop. DK, DK, where can they find you? Uh, everywhere DK Diamantes except on Instagram at real DK Diamantes until I just buy Instagram and turn every username into DK Diamantes. And then of course we got Quiet Shy or Quite Shallow, who is also quite sus. You can find her at uh! quite ex You can find her at Quite Sus on Twitter or Quite Sus on uh, Why? Amogus. 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 Oh. oh Amogus. My this, God, <laughs> it, it, it's a mo <laughs> I'm, in, I'm I'm turning the recording off. <laughs> cut, cut it.